I wonder, are you thinking to yourself, the sun is shining, I'm going to make vitamin D the natural way by going outside. Yep, we all think the summer means plenty of vitamin D to go around. But what if I told you that might not be true? I've spent the past 13 years as a doctor helping people achieve their health goals. And today I'm going to tell you the surprising truth about vitamin D and the summer and whether you might be missing out. Because here's the thing, just stepping outside in the summer isn't enough for a lot of people. And I'm going to tell you exactly why, how you can actually tell if you're getting enough and whether you still need supplements. Because there's a huge catch most people don't know about. By the end of this video, you won't just know whether the sun is enough, you'll know what's stopping you from making it and how to fix it. Let's start with how this actually works. Vitamin D is essential, not just for bones, it is important for calcium and bones, but for whole loads of other things like muscles and cell division, amongst other things. And without enough of it, we can get a whole load of health problems ranging from aches and pains and feeling tired all the way up to increased risks of cancer, diabetes and heart disease. Luckily, our body can make the stuff with good old fashioned sunlight. When ultraviolet B rays hit our skin, it triggers the conversion of a type of cholesterol to a type of vitamin D, which makes its way down to the kidneys where it's activated and ready to work. Simple, free, natural, effective, right? Well, not exactly, because here's the problem. There are at least five major factors that affect our ability to produce vitamin D. And I guarantee you at least one of them applies to you, because I know for certain one of them definitely applies to me. The first one is time. Time of the day matters. If the sunlight you're getting is before 10 a.m., or after 3 p.m. in the day, chances are you're not getting good enough sunlight to trigger that process of making vitamin D. The second factor is location. If you're in certain parts of the UK, Ireland, Canada, Northern Europe, then summer sun doesn't necessarily mean easy vitamin D production. The further away you are from the equator, the weaker those UVB rays are. And the next one, is a very personal one for me. Now, one thing this pale, freckly Irish skin is good for is making vitamin D. But only if it's actually exposed to the sun. It doesn't take as long for white, pale skin to produce vitamin D in the sun, but it also doesn't take as long for it to burn, which I'm well used to. So I tend not to get as much sun as other people. And then the flip of that is the people with darker skin who aren't as afraid of burning actually have more melanin in their skin, meaning it blocks UVB rays, meaning darker skin people need longer in the sun to actually produce enough vitamin D. Now, doctors don't really deserve the blame for the next one. Well, maybe a little bit. As a doctor, in one breath, I'll tell my patients, you need to expose your skin to more sun to make enough vitamin D. And in the next breath, keep out of the sun or wear sunscreen or you'll get skin cancer. Sunscreen blocks up to 98% of those UVB rays that we need to make vitamin D. So while it's great to prevent burning and skin cancer, it's not so great when it comes to vitamin D production. Now, although that blocks sun to an extent, nothing blocks sun like thick, brick walls. Think about your day for a moment. Do you spend a lot of time inside, sat down, beside a window that's closed, driving with the windows up and the air conditioning on? Because in all of those situations, you are making zero vitamin D. Because UVB rays obviously can't pass through walls, but they also can't pass through glass. So there are five big obstacles to making enough vitamin D. But if you overcome them, can you make enough? The short answer is yes, but only if you meet three conditions. Firstly, you need to get midday sun. So that's sun between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. As a general rule of thumb, if your shadow is longer than you are tall, 
then you're not making vitamin D. And this is why when you live further away from the equator, the sun does not rise high enough during the winter to make you produce sufficient amounts of vitamin D, no matter what you do. Secondly, you need bare skin exposure. So your face, your arms, and ideally your legs too. And that's without clothes covering that area, that's without sunscreen on, and it's not behind glass, because glass blocks those rays, remember. And thirdly, you need regular sun exposure. So that's at least 30 minutes a day of three to four days a week. Now you might need longer than that if you've got darker skin or if you're elderly. And here's something that I think that just proves the case and is very interesting. Even in countries that have strong sun, vitamin D is still a big problem. One study showed that 60% of people in Spain are deficient in vitamin D. So what's going on here? Well, it goes back to those three criteria that you've got to meet to make sufficient vitamin D. You might have the best sun in the world, but if you're wearing sunscreen, have darker skin, are elderly, work indoors mainly, or if there are one or any number of barriers, then you're just not gonna make enough vitamin D. So it really boils down to the following question. Should you take vitamin D supplements in the summer? Let's break it down. There are three ways to get an idea of if you're deficient in vitamin D. The first one is symptoms. If you're getting fatigue, muscle aches and pains, poor immunity, mood up and down, then you might be struggling with low vitamin D. So it might just be worthwhile taking vitamin D in the summer if that's the case. The second one is with a blood test. This is the only way to know for sure. But the issue with this is, it only represents what your vitamin D is at the time of the blood test. So are you taking supplements at the time you take it? And the second big barrier is the NHS. It's difficult to get a vitamin D test on the NHS. And thirdly, on the flip side, if you are meeting the three criteria that I pointed out, then you can be quite confident that you are getting enough vitamin D from the sun. So it boils down to asking yourself these three questions. Do I get midday sun on most days with bare skin? Do I live somewhere sunny enough? Do I lack risk factors like darker skin, older age, or being mostly indoors? And if you answered no to any of those, strongly consider taking supplements in summer. The truth is getting enough vitamin D is trickier than we might think. And we can calculate things and argue about it until the cows come home. But if you're doing what you should do, which is taking vitamin D supplements throughout the winter, then maybe it's just easier to continue it through the summer as well. And that way you know you are definitely getting enough. But there are lots of people who don't take it in the winter at all. And that comes as a shock when I say that and all the things that are associated with vitamin D deficiency. And personally, I feel it's a bit of a public health failure that we don't all know about vitamin D, which is why I've made this more broad overview of vitamin D just here. My thoughts, my feelings, and everything you really need to know about vitamin D deficiency, what to look out for, how to treat it, overdose, all of that is in this video right here. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'd love to hear about your thoughts in the comments section below. Like and subscribe if you can. And thank you very much for watching. Hopefully I'll see you over there.